You know, I, I really want to thank our, uh, our, our, our wonderful volunteers. You know what? Every single weekend, we desire to have a Super Bowl win in our church services. Every single weekend. But you know what? You can't have a win without a team. There's no such thing. If you're going to win in life, you got to have a team with you. And, uh, and I'm grateful that we have an amazing team here at Elevate Church that shows up every single week, okay? Wednesdays, Sundays, special events, uh, Bible classes, you name it. And they show up with an attitude of winning. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have losses. That doesn't mean that we don't have hiccups and problems and troubles and challenges and all the things, oh my, right? We have all those kind of issues in life. And no, I know that today's Super Bowl Sunday, 51, right? And it's going to be a great game. Um, but I've also, I've thought in, 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 the, in the years as, as, as I've learned and matured on how to live my, my walk with God, my, my Christian walk, how many know that every single day you and I take steps in life, right? We take steps every day. Whether you like it or not, every single one of you are stepping into something or stepping out from something. But football is no different. It's all about the steps in the game. If you got the right steps and you got the right play, you're going to make it somewhere. But even when you have the right steps and you got the right play, you can still get sacked. And today... Over 114 million people will be viewing Super Bowl Sunday. But let me tell you something. In heaven, there's more than 114 million people, and they're called heavenly hosts, angels of God Almighty, who are not only looking over us and viewing the game that Christ has given us, but you know what? They're, they're supporting you. They're cheering you on. They're saying, don't quit. Keep running. Don't give up. They're saying don't throw in the towel because at the end of the day, it's a fixed game. We win because Christ has already won the game. Amen. So we're all, we're all, listen, I get it. Patriots, a lot of haters here. I get it. <laughs> Every year, I, I, it's not my fault that this is our ninth Super Bowl. Get, don't, don't get weird on me. It's just, yeah, just don't get upset. Yeah. No, you know what's pretty cool too is, um, is, is I got an official... Uh, NFL ball, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, signed by one of the Patriots uh, over to me. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that pretty awesome? I know. And it's not deflated. It's completely. <laughs> yeah, but, but here's the reality. You know what? Uh, today, when, when, when whichever team wins the Super Bowl, they, they all want to keep the ball, right? Because it's, it's, it's the ball that won the game. And let me tell you something, uh, everyone on earth is, is trying to compete for a physical prize, but let me tell you something, in heaven you also have a reward, it's called the, it's called the crown of life, and on this life, you live this life for God in order for you and I one day to be able to walk through the pearly gates of, of heaven, and then God Almighty say, well done, good and faithful servant, and then place that crown of glory on you because you were willing to keep going to keep fighting, to keep winning, to keep trusting, to keep believing, and then all of a sudden you get some really big wins in life. Are you hearing me today? And so, you know what? I really feel like life is not only like a box of chocolates, but life can be. Oh, I even got a rookie card from the guy. It's pretty awesome, signed and everything, worth all kinds of monies. And, of course, I have to have Brady preaching with me today, you know? And then we have Super Bowl Sunday today here at the church at 3 o'clock on all three big screens with free barbecue. Come hang out with us. Let me tell you something. Regardless of what circumstance you're in right now, because every single one of you right now are in a specific position. Every single one of you right now have been taking steps maybe towards the wrong direction or the right direction. Every single one of us right now are in step into something great or in step into something that's going to be painful and hurtful. But at the end of the day, I want you to know something. That though life may be very impactful in a good way and a bad way, God still has a plan. God still has a purpose. You know what? We got God Almighty who is, he's like a football team. There's, there's an owner to the team, and then there's a head coach that calls the shots for the team. Well, guess what? God is the owner of Team Jesus, and Jesus is the quarterback, and he always throws, uh, for a nice little win. But he does have a plan. I want you to go with me in your app. If you have your app with you today or your Bible, um, 
we have all the verses for you. So we just try to make it easier for you to, to go back home and restudy the scriptures. But Jeremiah 29, 11, let's start with this. It says, for I know, everybody say, I know. I know. You know, there's, there's an importance to having some God confidence or some, or some uh, uh, you know, not just confidence, but some Godfidence. That I put my confidence in God. And, and when this scripture was written by Jeremiah, he said, this one thing I know. He, saw, he said, I know the plans I have for you, declares who? You know what? The Lord is the coach. And he's declaring to you, hey, listen, I got a win for you. I got a plan for you. I got a strategy for you that's going to help you win this game, even if you're losing right now. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. You ever say plans? Okay, so he declares that plan. He, he tells us the game. And he says, their plans to prosper you and not to harm you their plans to give you hope and a what that's a good plan listen at your worst god is still good on your worst day you're still going to heaven so he has a plan and i love this because you know what when i think about just you know what, the game and the plan, you know what, when, when today when the two teams go out and they, and they compete each, each other, you got to know something. They're not walking in there not thinking they don't have an opposing team that's going to come against all the plans that they have strategized. And you know what, many of their plans for both teams will work, but also many of the plans that they have strategized are not going to work. So sometimes you can be in a place in life where you plan to do all kinds of things. You have this diagram of your life. A lot of women like having plans, which is awesome. Okay. So we got a plan. Man, I have a plan to be something amazing for God. And that's awesome. But sometimes what you think is going to happen is really not happening. And so you got this plan, and you're like, okay, I'm going to, you know, shoom, and, and then this, I'm going to go shoom, and, and, and over here, I'm going to go shoom. And, and you got all these plans only to come to a place where, you know what, the thing that you thought you were going to be, you're not. The thing that you thought you were going to do, you haven't. And, and the stuff you thought you were going to receive, Nothing. So there's this diagram to life that we have. And yeah, it's hard to believe that God still has a plan when the plan ain't working. Aren't you glad that God doesn't have one plan? In the sense, I mean, what if your life looked like this every time, knowing that you wake up every day and that plan right there is going to suck? Listen, right now, you're stuck. But God says, hey, <laughs> chill out. I, I, I saw the enemy. I, I got it. Okay, no big deal. You know what, sometimes God says, you know what, I'll let the enemy, you know, hit you a little bit so that you can actually start using your faith. Because you're not just supposed to be on the offensive, you're supposed to be on the defensive. You're not only supposed to be on the defensive, you have to be on the offensive, right? You got to know, that's why he says, put on the full armor of God, right? He wants you to go to war sometimes, but then he also wants you to rest at times. He wants you to defend that time with him. Come on, rest in him. Uh, pray to him. So there's a time to fight and there's a time to rest. There's a time where you got to do, do, do most of the work and there's times where he just says, hey, just take a back seat, relax. I got this one. He refreshes our soul. That's our God constantly. So, uh, and, and I liken it because our life looks like this. We got all kinds of plans. You know, this is the career I'm going to choose and you're still not in your career. You change your career half half mark. Is there anything wrong with that? No. No, I thought I was going to be, you know, some big law enforcement dude. Okay, I had all the plans. All of them. I had the green light. I was going to get into a police department station that has a list of people that are waiting to get on it. And I had the green light, the, just the door, walk, whoop, walk right in. And God said, that's not my plan. That's good, but it's not God. I had letters from the district attorney, city attorney's office, everyone putting favor on me saying, this is the guy, take him, take him, take him. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, man, I have these people in ministry, these church people come to me and say, would you work in the church for us and work for minimum wage, praise God? 
what the? Oh, oh, and by the way, and it's not full time, it's part time. What? You see, sometimes the plan is forfeit yours, take his. That makes no sense. Sometimes the plan is, you know what? I don't, I can't make sense of all this, but it, it just, I just, I, because of my intimate relationship with him, it, it feels right. I just, kind of like when the guys are like, you feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it. Yeah. Yeah. This feels right. <laughs> crazy. It feels right. I thought I was crazy when I went into ministry. Like I left a six-figure job to make minimum wage part-time but it was God's plan are you hearing me today so plans sometimes don't work how about what else what else resembles uh you know the game how about tackles you saw some of the tackles some of the hits like bam I, I love the tackles you know what because here's the deal a lot of us have to tackle some issues right now in our life huh tackle some drama and it wasn't even your mama Right? You got to tackle some challenges. You got to tackle some fears. You got to tackle some doubts. You got to tackle some things that, that you, you didn't even create, but you still got to tackle it. But, but it's not my fault. They brought that into my life. It doesn't matter because you still have to tackle the issue. You got to tackle the problem. You got to tackle that thing. And sometimes, guess what? You got to tackle you. Oh, nobody wants to hear that, right? Not everything, not every tackle with someone else, sometimes you're running, you just dropped yourself. <laughs> it was you all along. It was you. Look at your neighbor. It could be you. What's another part of the game? The struggle. Come on, you're running. Come on, how many know that the struggle is real? Such a beautiful ball. <laughs> <laughs> to Pastor Mauricio Ruiz. Three times Super Bowl, number 53, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes, listen, when these guys are trying to take yardage, right, they're just trying to move the ball forward, right? They're just trying to, they're just trying to, you know, win some yards so that they can at least, you know, move the game from the 20-yard line to the 40-yard line, from the 40-yard line to the whatever-yard line. And so the struggle is real sometimes, Sometimes, you know what, the things that you've been trying to run, the call, the vision, the purpose, the plan, you thought it would have been done by now. It's been 10 years. But you got another 30 more, bro. Because the struggle is real. I should be further, but I'm not. The struggle is real. What do you do when you're trying to move forward and there's a constant struggle for you to move five yards 10 yards. You know what you do? You keep doing what you know to do. You keep believing God and you keep trusting God. You believe that, he is, that all things are possible with him, but you also have to trust his plan. You got to trust his plan. Easy to believe, hard to trust. Hard to trust. Don't be all religious on me. It's hard to trust God because sometimes God is asking you to trust him when you know that you can get yourself out of a pickle, when he really wants to make tuna salad. Right? So the struggle, say struggle. Man, anybody struggling right now? None of you? Okay, God bless you. And then you know what? Sometimes you're running the ball. You're like, yeah, yeah, things are going awesome. And you're running and you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> and then you do what? You what? You what? You fumble the ball. What happens when you fumble the ball? You know, sometimes the fumble, it's not just, oh, I dropped the ball. No, you're sinning. Have you ever fumbled in life? Things were going well. Things were going awesome. And then you fumble. But how many know that Jesus always intercepts every single fumble? And he picks it back up and he recovers quickly for you. And then he puts the ball back in your head and says, go at it again. And with that fumble, sometimes there's a, there's a snap. You know the snap? It's when you sin, you're like, oh, snap. Yeah, the old snap comes in. The 
struggle is real. We go through it. The challenges, they're faithful, aren't they? They always show up. They're like bills, right? On time, every month. Then there's the sidelines. You know, today 114 million people will be on the sidelines watching, you know, two teams play the game. I wonder how many Christians are on the sidelines right now. You're just letting all the 20% do all the work while the 80% is just hanging out watching church people do God things. Maybe you've been sitting on your rusty dusty for a little long, a little too long. Shouting praise. But when are you going to get in the game? When are you going to get engaged? When are you going to get involved? When are you going to connect with kingdom stuff, amen? We can't just pray, God, let your kingdom come. God, like, I want to be my kingdom, but can you start living kingdom? We'll move on from that. A lot of people didn't like that one either at the 8 a.m. <laughs> then there's the offense, right? Too many Christians live literally on the offense. We say that over here because I <laughs> it tickled someone funny over here. We got <laughs> Christians that are very offended. Offense. God says, I didn't raise you up to be offense. I raised you up to have an offense. How many more times will you be offended because something didn't happen for you or someone did something they didn't, I didn't like that. Oh, get over it. It, it happens. People will fail you. Okay? There is no such thing as perfection. There is no perfect person. Look at yourself in the mirror. You'll realize it much quicker when you realize, dang, I am perfect. I better show some grace. Huh? Yeah? Can't get mad at everything. Everybody say, but God has a plan. How about hits? How about hits? Huh? Have you ever been hit physically? I remember I was running the ball many years ago. Many of you know the story. And then, boom, cancer. What the? Healthy. All those years, healthy. Whole. Never, never missed a day. Never called in one day sick to work until I landed in the hospital. And even then, I want to leave the hospital. That came out of nowhere. That was a hard hit. You know what? It was not only my physical sense of being hit with this tumor that was huge inside my body, but you know what it also took? It took one year of my life away. One year. Do you have one year to give up right now? One year. My, 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 my bills, my doctor bills were over $700,000. I was, I was in debt for five years Paying like a big portion for five straight years. That's a hit. Is your career being hit right now? Is your workplace being hit right now? Is your family being hit right now? Come on, are your children going a little cray cray right now? Now, what hits are you taking right now? Because let me tell you something the hits of life are real. That's what we're calling this series, which starts today, ends next weekend. Life's greatest hits because we all take them, every single one of us. But here's the deal, guys. I want you to take this away with you today. You got to realize that even though we have all kinds of hits, you have to have the maturity to say this to yourself, but I know my enemy. I know my true enemy. It's not my family. It's not my child. It's not my spouse. It's not my work. It's not my job. It's not my career. You have a true enemy. Look at this. 1 Peter 5.8 says this. It says, be alert and of sober mind. It says, your enemy who? Who's your enemy? Who's your enemy? He says, your enemy. The devil prowls around like a what? And I love this verse because you know what? It just basically describes Satan. It says, he walks about like. And say he is a roaring lion. He walks as if he was, but he's not. So all he does is growl. And he doesn't want to show you his teeth because all he can do to you is gum you to death. He walks about like a roaring lion. That's all he does is roar. Looking who he may devour. He's very deceiving, isn't he? He makes himself something that he's not. He's not. He's like, but he's not. We only have one line, and that's 
the line of Judah, right? That's God Almighty. And he's got some teeth. And he'll tear him up. And he already did. Jesus said that I destroyed every single work of the devil. Oh, my. Are you hearing me? So he says, but you got to be alert. When you play the game, are you just kind of standing around looking at flies? You will get hit. Be alert. Pay attention. Wake up. Just slap your neighbor real quick. Say, wake up. Come on, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Slap them, please. Some of them deserve it right now. Wake up. Listen, if you're going to win, you got to know your enemy, guys. Come on, after you smack him, just say, hey, listen, you know your enemy. Don't get offended. What's wrong with you? But in all this, God still says, I have a plan. In all this, God still says, I have a hope for you. In all this, God still says, and I got a future as well. I have a plan. I have a plan. I have a hope. And you know what? As you, as you read the Bible, I love reading the Bible because it's in the word of God where you're able to uh, relate to some people in the Bible that have experienced, you know, their, their own avalanche of pain. Let's just take Job, for example. Anyone ever read the story of Job? Okay, let's just talk about him, okay? The guy, he's a righteous man. He's described as this righteous, God-fearing man. He loves God with all his heart. He goes to church every Sunday to elevate church. Every Sunday, he shows up. Every Sunday, never miss. He serves in the church. He's involved. He loves to tithe. He's a great man. You know, it, 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 it really, it kind of bothers me. Have you ever heard people say, why do, why do bad things happen to good people? Yeah, how many of you ever heard that? You know, let me teach you something. Here's what you tell them. You tell them, ah, okay, can I bring it back to you now? And be like, well, why do good things happen to bad people? Have you ever thought about that one? You know why? Because God, God is a just God. He loves the bad and the good. And both have their share of good and bad. So Job, let's go back to Job. So Job, Job is experiencing this, this tremendous blessings. Like, man, he's running the ball. He's getting yardage. He's, he's got all the right steps and he's got the right plan. He's got the right game and he's, he's filthy rich. He is blessed not only financially, but you know what? He's got a big family. He's got 10 kids, 10 children. The brother owns crazy land. I'm talking some land that as far as the eye can see with all kinds of sheep and goats and you name it and carne asada and you, they're just amazing. The guy's blessed. Okay, he's got friends everywhere. Everybody likes Job. God favors Job. God looks down on Job and blessed him with all those things. But you know what who was also looking? The devil. And he comes to God and he says, hey, God. <laughs> so that Job guy, you like him, huh? Yeah, I like him. <laughs> he obeys you, huh? Yeah, he obeys me. <laughs> he prays to you, yep. Goes to church, yep. Reads his Bible, yep. Yep, yep. <laughs> he says, okay. <laughs> How about you let me have a little some sum with him, you know? And let's see. Let's see if he is who he says you, he is. Let's see if he is who you say he is. How, how about you let me just kind of, you know, <laughs> bring a little bit of hits, if you know what I mean, God. You know, like the hit you gave me when you kicked me out of heaven? Let me give him one. Because I know that if I give it to him, he will curse you to your face. And he will hate you. And God said, okay, okay. So you want to tempt my servant. Okay, you can do that, but you can't touch him in the sense of you can't take his life. Won't let you, can't touch this. And so the enemy goes off. Job is living life. Everything is awesome, blessed on top of the world, abundantly blessed financially, everything, you name it. And one day, just one day out of nowhere, Bam. You know what happens? His 10 kids are killed. Now, mind you, his kids were off. His kids were all, always sinning. But because of the grace on mom and dad, the grace was on the kids. But the kids were all out of whack and they did everything. But he got hit. All 10 kids died on the same day. Can you imagine doing a funeral service for all 10 of your children on one day? You know what? As soon as he does that, the kids are dead. You know what happens next? He loses everything. 
His land is taken away. His money is taken away. All his sheep, everything, his herds, his servants, everything was stripped from him. Today, you're blessed. Tomorrow, you have nothing left. That's like you going home and you got a padlock on your apartment, your house, your car has been repossessed, your, fi- your job fires you, lays you off, whatever you want to call it. All of a sudden, all your bank accounts are closed. You have nothing. You want to talk about marriage problems? His wife was wicked, man. You know what she tells Job? She says, why don't you curse God and die? And then you would think, Okay, those were all the exterior things that were taken. But you know what? It goes even further. Job is now dealing with a heavy sickness. They're called boils. And so all these boils start growing on him, and they're so painful that he's in excruciating pain. And he's going through it. And in the midst of everything, can you imagine how many people probably laughed at him? Like, oh, oh, yeah, look at Job. Look at him and his God. Whoa, things aren't going that well, are they? Aren't you? Well, where's your God now? Have you ever had people mock you? Like, if you're so righteous, then where's your righteous God? If you're so amazing, if you, if, you, if you sing when you're going through hell and nothing's happening, why why do you continue to worship? And then Job makes a profound statement. And <laughs> look at this. Job 19, 25. And he says, and this is his writing. He says, for I know. Everybody say, I know. Man, isn't that how we started? I know. God says, I know the plans I have for you. Job obviously read Jeremiah and said, I know. I know that in the midst of this, my God is going to redeem me. Look, he says, for I know that my redeemer lives. Can you stand up in the midst of circumstance, in the midst of pain? Can you stand up in the midst of everything going wrong and still say, but my God is my redeemer? Can you do that? Right now, when you can't pay the mortgage, you can't pay the apartment, you can't pay the bills, but can you stand up and say, but one thing I know, I can't pay this, I can't deal with this sickness, it's over, overbearing me, it's overwhelming me, but my God is my redeemer. Amen. Can you say that? Give God a big shout of praise. My redeemer lives. You may not be the greatest Christian right now, but you can say this, but by God's grace, I get to stand here today. I get to hear this message. I get to hear and feel the presence and the love of God Almighty. I get to experience his overwhelming love and his grace. He says, when you're weak, I'm strong in you. Why? Because my Redeemer lives. Let's all say that to count three. One, two, three. And he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, let me say this, this I know. He said that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. I no longer, listen, I don't have religion. I got a relationship. Me and him, we're connected. I don't need a man to get to God. I go directly to the Father through the Son. That's how I go. I go in straight in. Come on. I go straight in. Sometimes the, sometimes the quarterback has to run it. Like you'll see today with Tom Brady. <laughs> You're going to see how we run it. Don't hate. Look. Look. And my eyes shall behold and not another. I'm not going to go look for 10 other people's opinions. I'm not going to go ask that person for counsel, I'm going to shift my eyes back to Jesus where my help comes from because my Redeemer lives and my heart will continue to yearn within me for more of Jesus. When you squeeze me, Jesus is going to come out. When you pressure me, Jesus is going to come out. Man, when I feel I can no more, I'm going to shout all the more, my Redeemer lives. Can I have like five more minutes? Almost done, I promise, five. I would take ten, but we'd get some people mad here. It's church people, remember. (laughs) Job learned to trust God when nothing made sense. But let me tell you something. When nothing makes sense, 
there's only one plan book you need to open. And it's the word of God. How do I know that? Because he has the steps to win the game. Look at Psalms 37, 23 quick. He says the steps. Everybody say the steps. You see, every day you and I, we're taking steps. You took steps to walk into church today. You took, you took steps from home to your car, to a grocery store, to a restaurant, to church. Every single one of us have taken some steps this morning. All of us, whether you like it or not, there are steps in life. You can't get out of steps. You are stepping into something or you're stepping out from something. But I don't know about you, but the thing I want to make sure that I do in 2017 is I want to be in step with my God so that I can draw closer to him. If you really want to grow in 2017, step into him. Stop being on the sidelines and say, you know what, God, in 2017, you know what, I'm going to step into the line, right, into the game, and I'm going to make sure that I am in his perfect will and in his perfect plan, and I'm going to take his steps. Look what it says. The steps of a good man and a good woman are ordered by who? God. In other words, he already has the plan. But it's not working, but he has the plan. And he delights in the one who takes his steps. Many times we're like, it's not working, it's not working. Well, it's not that he's not working. You're not working. He already, made, he already gave you this step. You're just not willing to take that step. I'm broke. Okay, bring an offering, bring a tithe. No, 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 no. I believe God, but I ain't trusting him like that. I know my money says, in God we trust. But that's crazy. Give you my money? How, how's that going to work for you? How? You're sick right now. Man, I've taken all the medicine. Nothing's working. I, I, am, I know firsthand. Doctor came in. Mauricio, we're so sorry. Nothing is working. There's nothing else we can do. Do you know what that feels like? I don't think so. I know what that feels like. When I have to go back and look up and say, but my God is my redeemer. When the, when, when the world has no plan, my God still has a plan. Are you with me? It's like going to the gym. How many like going to the gym? Nobody? Okay. Well, when you go to the gym, there is one. You know, I, I work out at least four times a week, and I hate the Stairmaster. I can't stand it. You know why? Because it's just like everybody looks like they're hurting. You know, it's just like. And then, you know, sometimes in life, we're, we're, we're like stepping and, and we're struggling and we're, uh, and we're going nowhere. Have you ever been stepping in life and you're going nowhere? Come on, you're all in a hurry only to get to nowhere. It's funny, and I was telling the church at the end, I'm like, yeah, sometimes you're like, uh, uh, and then God is so good. He's so full of grace. Then Jesus shows up at the gym in the elevator. <laughs> Bing, <laughs> going up. And, and so while you're struggling, he's like, hey, we can just write this thing right here. I'll take you up. I thought about this because where I do my running, there's an elevator there. <laughs> and I sound like, man, that looks so much easier. Right? The steps of a righteous man and woman are ordered by God. Let me tell you something right now. Your steps are ordered by God. And how do I, how do I follow those steps? I'm glad you asked quickly. Last verse, Psalms 119, 105. And then I give you the five points, the five steps you got to do. Ready? 105, 119. It says, your word is a yeah. to my feet and a light to my. Yeah. And I love it because in these two verses, God tells us two things. Just in this one little verse, he says two things. He says, I care about you and I care about where you're going. I was like, I love you so much. I not only have a plan, I love you so much that I care about where you are right now, but I also care about where I want to take you. The word is a lamp to my feet, but it's also a light to my path. Maybe right now you're in a dark place. Let me tell you something. The word, Jesus, the word, the word of God, the Bible. When you're in trouble, let me tell you something. You got to learn how to dive back into the scriptures. Because the Bible is the only power that has the wisdom to get you out of trouble. The only thing. He's the, he's the lamp to your feet and the light to your path. If you're in darkness right now, he knows how to bring clarity. If your family's a mess, he knows how to bring direction. If your career's a little bit off, he knows how to give you focus. 
the word is a lamp to your feet. Everybody say the word. Say the Bible. The word of God. Can you dim all these lights for me? The word is, listen, there's times in life where you just feel like you're just in darkness. Lights, guys, this is your cue. All of it, like we did at the 8 a.m. Everything, screens, everything. Because sometimes in life, it really goes dark. Really dark. Dark. And sometimes, let me tell you something. Have you ever hit your foot, your big old toe on something in the dark? And it's like, <laughs> have you? <laughs> Some of you got bigger toes than others. <laughs> Some of you haven't recovered yet. That thing is big. Yeah, and, and listen, and, and we go through it, and, and we experience pain, and, and, and we go through sorrow, and we're in the midst of darkness, and, and we just don't know what to do. And so we start calling the 10 people, the 20 people, the 30 people we know. We start asking people, start an intercessory line for me. Start a prayer line. Listen, he said the word is a lamp to your feet. When you're in darkness, I know how to light you up. When you feel like you don't know where to go, I know the way because my son is the truth and the life. And here's what happens. When you open your word, he lights you up. He lights you up. All of a sudden, dang, things were dark, but I can see now. Oh, my God. I bet y'all wish you had a Bible that lit up like this, huh? <laughs> like, dang, I, wanna, I, want, I want to read my Bible when I get home. The word, listen, the word is a lamp to your feet and it's a light to your path. When you don't know what to do, the word tells you, guess what? Huh? Man, what do I do about that situation? How, how am I going to get out of debt? Right? Yeah. How are we going to get out of that sickness? How are we going to get out of this situation? Whew. Right? How am I going to do this, God? I feel empty. I feel lost. I feel lonely. I feel, oh, Okay. Then when you close it, boom. Oh, no, no, I don't like that. Don't. Okay, open it, open it. <laughs> you can turn the lights on now, guys. Say with me, the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We got to get back to the word, guys. I love teaching, but don't let me keep spoon feeding you. I love you. I love church people. Don't get me wrong. I'm grateful. But I want to grow some, some people. I want to mature some people in the word. Because you won't always have a sermon. You got to be one with the Father. Five, five steps quickly. Write these down. Number one, five steps to win your Super Bowl. <laughs> what? It was so funny. Did I say something? Five steps to win your Super Bowl. Number one, don't just believe God, but trust his plan. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. Don't just believe God, trust his plan. Number two, plays or methods are not permanent, they change. Let me be honest with you guys. Life changes. Stop getting funky and stuck over that. You know how I know life changes? Guess what? You're not the same age you were 10 years ago. It changes. I'm not the same 15-year-old at 41 years old. I got to grow up. But that goes for your walk with God. How old are you in God? Are you still a child? Or have you matured? Life changes. Methods change, but God's plan never changes. Amen? Number three, don't just learn how to receive a hope and a future, but live it. Let people walk into your path and find hope with future. Number four, set a culture of expectation. In other words, come in expecting to hear from heaven. Don't just come to church anymore just be like, okay, let's get church off the list. No, let's go to church because I need to hear from heaven. Let's go to church because God's going to speak to me today. Did God speak to anyone today at all? Lift your hand. Did God speak to you? Okay, great. Now go take it and do something with it. Put an expectation that tomorrow is going to be more awesome than today. Number five, 
Start with the end in mind when you run with God. How do I know that? Well, let me tell you something. Jesus, in the midst of his pain, he's in the, the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's going through struggle, and he says, God, if you can pass this cup for me, please do it. But guess what? At the end of his pain, he says, you know what? Uh, for, the, for the joy that is set before me, I endured the cross. You know what? You have to already look at the end in mind. You, know, you may be in the midst of your circumstance right now. You may be in the midst of pain, but you have to say, okay, but you know what? I'm coming out. It's going to get better. Start with the end in mind when you run with God. Why do I tell you this? Because you know what? When you can't see something happening that's good in your life, then one thing you've got to start learning to do is focus on the good stuff that he did in your past life. You remember what he delivered you from? How about don't focus on what's not happening now, but focus on what did happen then that was awesome and say, you know what? The same God that delivered me then is the same God that's going to deliver me now. Why do I say that? Because Philippians 1.6 says this, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He will finish the work. Bow your head, close your eyes. And Father, I pray right now for each and every single one of us, Lord, as, as we're here today, Father, we're all in different steps. Every one of us, we're in different positions. We're in different seasons of life. And Lord, though some of us may feel like we're losing, I thank you that even in a losing game, you still have a plan to win. And so, Father, I pray for grace. I pray for strength. I pray that you would help each and every single one of us, Father, to put our eyes back in the word, Father, for your word is a lamp to my feet and it's a light to my path. Jesus, I'm asking you, help us, lead us, guide us, direct our steps. Help us to not only believe in you, but to trust in your plan for our life, even when it doesn't make sense. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.